Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I'm here at Willinghurst Fishery, just a day ticket cart fishery. But aside from the usual bait you can fish here with a fly rod. No floating baits allowed with a hook in them, but you can use a fly. Okay, so we're going to give it a go here. Apparently it's a top hole place for go fly fishing. Now to get those fish up to start with, there's so many fish stocked in here, it's rare for an insect to even get to the surface. If it hatches out in the mud, it probably won't even make it to the surface. It's going to get eaten. So it's not like there's really a hatch of flies as such that trout, uh, trout, carp, when, when trout fishing two days ago, you're still in there. The carp are not going to be rising all over the place. So you need to bring them to the surface. To bring them to the surface, you need chum mixer biscuits. Floating biscuits, or you can indeed use bread. But biscuits are best, or floating trout pellets, and we use these flies, they're called a hedgehog fly. It's very old, I've done this for 20, 30 years. Tied by Sid Knight, it's just straight deer hair, which they then clip back. Generally, they will bleach it white and then stain it or dye it down to the colour of the free samples that you're throwing in the water. So if you're using, let's say, bread, you would obviously want a white deer um, hair, just leave it bleach white. If you're using brown biscuits, which I'm using dog biscuits, then obviously they get. you can ask for them to be toned down to the same size as the dog biscuit. If you're using a floating trout pellet, which I haven't got here, but similar thing, deer hair, they will be much darker because there's more protein and oils in them. This would be darker. You can also touch those down with a felt pen. You can darken it yourself, you know, if you've when you buy the fly itself it doesn't come in the right colour don't be too concerned about that you can dye it down with a felt pen yourself i'm using a shortish leader of about four or five feet the reason being you have to pick up and strike quite quickly with a carp now how can i describe this you have to be aware it's a slow take not as fast as a trout taking a dry fly it's a slow take but a fast pickup because the minute they're biting on it they want to blow it out again so you're pausing, pausing, pausing while the mouth comes over it. As soon as that mouth closes, pop with a fly rod, you should hook it up. A shorter leader, I find, turns over much better on shorter casts. Keeps me in connection when I want to do that striking. I've got one reel floating line there. The other reel, just as a backup, I think it's intermediate, which means it can float or sink depending whether I want to put grease on it or whether I want to degrease it. So I've got two outfits. They're just regular. I think one's, one's an all glass rod, the other might be glass and a carbon, they're about 30 years old, one's 40, 45 years old, still going, bonefish rod, and that is an excellent bonefish rod, more than enough for these carp. Now some people actually like to use the dog biscuits hard, just straight out the packet. I like to soak mine, generally do it the night before, and I just cover them with water, give them about 30 minutes, just in a bucket like this, or shallow trays are better, strain all the water off, then get a wet towel and lay a wet towel on the top of them. You might want to go out about an hour later, get the ones at the bottom, put them at the top, vice versa, put the wet towel back on. The next morning they should have all swollen up twice the size. And more important, they should be lovely and spongy. Now, the carp will take hard biscuits and they crunch them up with their throat teeth. That's not a problem. I'm aware of that. I just feel that when I strike, they're used to holding on to a softer biscuit a little bit longer than a hard one. That's just my, my theory and that's why I like using soft biscuits. I feel they get more confident, therefore I feel they take the fly better. I'm going to start getting some out, see if we can get a few carp to come up on the top in my area where I can present them with that hedgehog fly. You just want to throw about a dozen or so, or you can catapult them out, but don't forget if you catapult them out you've got to make sure you can actually cast that far. Also, if they drift away on the wind, make sure that you go down the bottom end where they're drifting up towards the bank, otherwise you'll never be able to reach them with a fly rod. The benefit of this is you can do lots of patches around a lake if there's not other anglers in the swims and just watch visually and you don't even cast until they start to come up. You don't waste any time at all. A tip I always give trout fishermen is if you don't do a lot of fly fishing you're going to get a lot of this memory coil from the real spool. You see that? like a clock spring. If you go in all the time, every weekend, probably don't get it. But for a lot of us don't get the chance to go every single day, I certainly don't, so it ends up like this. What you can do, that will cut your casting distance down. Just gently take it, just ease a little bit of tension into that line, don't snap it, don't put it so hard you snap it, just pull it like this. 
hold it a second or two, now watch. It goes nice and limp. That will go through either the snake guides or the ordinary guides of the rod much, much easier. And it might just get you that extra bit of distance that drops a fly right on the nose of the biggest carp you've ever seen. Well guys, fish on here. Get the camera switched on, we see what we're doing. I'm gonna strip it in first. If you've got a fish that's running away from you fast and you, and you suddenly get slack line, he's not literally like this one's now taken all the line out, look. And I'm gonna get it on the reel. Why do they go carp fishing on the fly? I wonder why. Now I've got it on the reel, I can fight in and keep a bit of tension on it. It's a long way out. I haven't quite got all the fly line out there, but I'll tell you what, I think well on the way. I think this one's a mirror. What I tend to do, a lot of guys play it trout wise, just off their wrist, put a lot of strain on the wrist here. Eventually, if you get bigger and bigger fish, you'll do that. You'll keep it along your forearm and just palm the rim of the spool if you don't have a centre drag reel. There's what's called a direct drive where the handle turns for every revolution of the reel. It's called direct drive. Some of a centre drag, the outside reel doesn't whiz around and bang your knuckles and you can adjust tension, whereas this you can't adjust tension, you have to do it with your hand or with your finger like this and just apply pressure and then release it when he wants to go. What I like to do is bonefish style, put the, the butt of the fly rod there and then just crank down on it and you can just release it. I can also double up on the drag, I can, I can pinch, well, I can pinch the line if you let me, pinch the line there to lock it and I can palm it and I can also release release both of those quickly as well. Don't be afraid if you've uh, if you've got a fish on and he's out a long way and he suddenly turns and bolts towards you, just wind down. If you can't keep pace with the speed, walk backwards. Walk backwards with it. There you guys guys, this is a really nice mirror carp. For a fly rod, it's a nice fish. See if I can get him down there for you. There he is, he's gonna roll. Holy cow, it's a nice fish. That is, was, so he was a nice fish. Get him up again. Where is the net? Man alive, this fish is giving me a bad time. Not a million miles away from that magic number, guys. Just hope that fly holds. We're rolling just right. Come on. This is where you've got to be careful you don't break the tip of the rod. It's a big fish. Mamma mia. Such a nice looking fish as well. Right again. It's not looking good. <laughs> there we go guys. What a cracking fish to get in a fly rod. I mean a beautiful scrap, lovely looking mirror carp. I guess 10, 11 pounds. Now another tip you might get, there might be a very, just miss one. <laughs> there might be a very slight drift that's just easing the fly towards you and it will put little snakes in the line, that's slack. So when you go to pick up, 
where you think the fly landed actually isn't. It might be three, four, five, six feet in front of you, but you can't see that on a vast open expanse of water. So I suggest you just keep pace with it very slowly like this, but don't move the fly. You just want to keep pace with that wind drift so that you're almost tight to the fly and as soon as a carp takes, you're ready to react. Wear a cap with a wide brim like this so it shuts down the light over the glasses. A pair of polarizing glasses are a must because although you'll be able to see the f those, those flies being taken by the carp, you actually might be able to see a carp cruising under the surface. Sometimes they come up vertically like this and just slowly suck the fly down. That's tough target fishing. That's not easy. You have to be on the ball for that one. But if you can see a carp that's cruising amongst those floating biscuits, you can present to him like you would a trout about a foot to two foot, well, maybe two feet in front of him, I would say, would be nice. That way he shouldn't spook. Don't put the leader over the back of the fish. That's sure to spook them. Just keep the line away from the carp and all they can see is the fly, hopefully before they see the leader. Carp aren't like trout. You can, most of the time, pick the line off the water, lay it down again. So if you, if you don't get a take and the carp's moving along like this, you want to keep targeting two feet, two feet, two feet. Eventually, you should get a take. And when you pick the line, a floating line off the surface, don't just tear it off the surface. I tend to find, if the fly is up there and I've cast that way, I just do a little shake of the rod as I lift it off. It breaks the surface tension of the fly line and it can lift it off and you can just do your back cast and speed it up, get all that fly line out in the air without disturbing the water too much, two or three force casts down. You don't need to force cast loads and loads and loads, just when you get good with it, pick up a couple of times, dry the fly off in the air, bam, straight back down on the carp. You want to be in their face within a foot to two feet as many times as you can without spooking them. Another tip, don't listen to me, I don't know what I'm talking about. I missed that one and he absolutely inhaled the fly. Now, if you can, try and chum them up with those floaters closer and closer and closer, because the closer you are to the carp, the more chance you do have of hooking them. As I was then, a full long cast, pretty tricky, you know, trying to nail those fish. I'm trying to do it because the biscuits are drifting slowly away from me, but if I can chum them closer, that's the way to do it. That one sounded as though he was eating a fried breakfast. Once you get them feeding, six or eight biscuits in a tight cluster is all you need. We're going to put some in close, that easy hooking, and some a little bit farther out. So I've got two swims on the go at the same time. I'm trying to look for a slightly bigger fish. If they're three or four pounders around, I try and avoid casting for them because if I do hook one up, all that fighting, all that splashing, all that action is going to put the bigger fish, like that one I caught earlier, on their guard. Now as well as drying that fly off, so you just with a bit of dry handkerchief every once in a while, you can in fact get some regular trout fishing floatant, different makes of about and just a drop or two in amongst those fibres will just enable it to Stay on the surface film that a little bit longer, let it dry. Just a bit of fly floatant, simple, easy. You can actually get a degrease and it goes up the line. But I always think sometimes it makes it sort of opaque and I wonder, you know, do the carp and also the trout see it? I certainly think the trout see it. But let that dry and you're ready to go again. It's just a small one, chaps, but they all count. Well, the fly's just fallen out. It's barbless. But look at this fish. The colours. I'm talking the colours, not size now, guys. Almost. Great big paddle of a tail on it. Almost worthy of a place in anybody's ornamental pond. Now, look at that. 
Is that not the prettiest carp you've seen in a long time? With a huge paddle of a tail. Lovely fish on a fly rod. I think I might go and take a look at one of the other lakes. That is a pretty fish. I'm not going to lie guys, this could be my biggest carp on a fly rod. Just come to the other lake, plagued by ducks. And I'm playing it like a pansy like you all do because you don't want it to fall off. But this looks like a really, really nice fish. This one could be well into double figures, I don't know. Looks like a good fish, I'll give Mike a shout. Holy cow man, it's really cool. Christ. Well, I'm all a quiver, I'm all a shake. That's a fly rod on reel. Got a bad mark on his tail, maybe somebody else knows the name of this fish. I don't know the name, I just know it. What do you think, Mike? 15, 16 pounds? It's a nice fish. That's a nice carp on a fly rod, man. Go. There we go, guys. Fantastic carp on the fly rod. Got to go 16 pounds. Let's get it back. What a result. Hope you've enjoyed the tips. That is totally awesome for me <laughs> Jesus what was that for I let you go didn't I soaking <laughs> oh, I might as well put myself in the waist leg now <laughs> <laughs> Look at that rod. I saw the line okay, wait, let me that, that was on the fly. let me take it off. Holy cow, guys! Someone again. <laughs> Guy on the other boat, bank tab one. I cast out full distance I could cast. We got the whole take couldn't, on camera. Couldn't see the. Uh, I couldn't see the fly. I just saw a tweak on the line, and because I do a bit of trout fishing, I think. I said to Mike, I said, you know what, there's two good fish still out there. We were just about to leave, just about to leave after that fish. I think this one's the same size as that last one, but man, what a setup with a hook. Bosh, full range, about, ooh, about 25 yards away. Jesus, the rod is hooked over. My buzzers, my electronic cart buzzers could be on eBay by the end of the week. Oh, that was a cracking I can take, if we can see the fish now. As you know, this, this used to be a trout lake many, many years ago when I used to do articles for the fishing magazines. And there were a few carp in there, and they were like four or five pounders. We used to see them when we were trout fishing. <laughs> it's a good fish. It's, <laughs> it's a good like small carp. I can't believe it. I mean, why would you want a bivvy? The rod is flat. Ridiculous. Yeah, we used to see, I wonder if these carp in here now are the ones I, I saw like 30, 40 years ago when I was doing trout articles. And there's another tip. You know what? That was something I saw at another fishery, fly fishing, that sometimes, man, that's, that's 10, 11 pounds, common. So we all know he's going to go completely <laughs> over the edge when he gets to the net and the mat. It's the fact they use those little sight indicators, little sight bobs, when the fish are, are taking below the, below the surface. So that's another little tip is you can use a sight bob on the line and you could use a fly like a nymph and then you could catapult out sinking pellets, sinking throughout pellets and you watch the sight bob pop down. There's another way of doing it. Man alive, I can't believe a second fish like that. So that's two last casts I've had. Two and fish. It looks like my two biggest fish of the day. And they wonder why I'm always late home for tea. I'll tell you what, this is scrapping better than the other one. Just got to keep that pressure on them. 
That's more than 10 pounds, right? Yeah, right. it's a definitely a double. I'd say it's, a, it's definitely a double. That is ridiculous. I mean, I haven't fished this late. I just came up and I thought, you know what, I'll go and see and throw some biscuits around. See if my friends the ducks will come out. Yeah, they came out. They obviously thought I was crackers. And then I spotted one about five pounds, but my goodness me. There's some big fish in this lake. Look at that one. God, alive, I can't do anything with it. Guys, when you're pressure fish, whatever you're pressuring, keep the rod low. Don't keep it tipped right back, because it's going to snap. Keep it low, you'll get more power. Holy smoly. That fish is about 14 pound common. That is ridiculous. Come on. Making my arm ache now. Oh, good lord alive. Look at the size of that. I thought it was about eight pounds. Forget it. That's a big old fish. <laughs> oh, God almighty. Good lord alive. I mean, we'd be made up to catch that on a cart one, mate, wouldn't we? Oh, yeah, absolutely. 13 pounds 12, there you go. Oh, I haven't got my glasses, so I don't know, guys. Uh, Six ounces. No, hold on, let's reset that. I would have thought, even a million miles away from 16. 14 to 16. That is... I won't read it. 17 pounds 6. 70, you were right. You yeah, know, he's were big. Right. I thought he was big. You Across the right. bottom. That is a cracking fish on the fly. Let's have a look. So that's two PBs, guys, <laughs> in two casts. <laughs> and what a spanking fish. That's a beauty. Oh, 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 ladies, what a fish that is. I forgot what the weight was. 17. 17.6, 17, I think, or something. Well, it's on the video, anyway. Yeah. Magnificent fish. Unbelievable scrap. So, carp rods, buzzers, on eBay, going cheap. Fly rods? Well, I've got fly rods, plenty. Not as fast as a bonefish, but plenty of power. What a session. I am covered in fish slime. I'm soaked from the last one. God only knows what this one's gonna to do to me. But, two PBs in two casts on a fly rod. Obviously I caught bigger carp, but not on a fly rod. That was brilliant. I feel a shower coming. No, he's a good boy. Well done. Totally awesome. Does it again.